Hello and welcome to another edition of Resource Review, the programme that brings you in-depth analysis of classroom resources both here in the studio and in the classroom. Under the microscope today are resources for primary science. Recommending today's resources is our subject specialist, Roger Frost. Roger is a science curriculum advisor, software resource writer, and also a journalist for the Times Educational Supplement, The Guardian and The Sunday Times. Alongside Roger, we have our freelance education consultant, Adrienne Jones, a resource specialist who is also a former primary teacher. We're also joined by Adrian Fenton, curriculum support manager for the Association for Science Education. Well, welcome to all of you. Roger, the three resources that you've chosen today for primary science are all ICT based. Were you spoilt for choice? Indeed I was. I think there is a, a massive choice out there and I think one does have to select and choose very carefully. I've chosen some interesting ones, I hope. Let's start with the first of your choices, that's Science Mania by Topologica. Now this is a CD-ROM. Tell me a little bit more about it and why you chose it. Well, we're looking here at something providing revision and backup work. And in that situation, whenever you're doing revision, you're looking for something that will engage kids pretty much on their own. Mm. So this is, in fact, a game in which kids negotiate a maze and they answer questions to get round the maze. Well, thanks, Roger. But before we discuss the resource any further with our panellists, let's look at it in use. We took Science Mania to the London Metropolitan University IT Learning Exchange, where Principal Advisor Ian Sillett and three budding young scientists volunteered to look at the CD-ROM for us during their precious half-term week. This programme is called Science Mania, and it's intended for pupils to be able to uh, revise knowledge they have about the science curriculum, particularly Key Stage 2 pupils. Omar, what's this question? Which of these materials can be magnetic? The pupil controls a figure moving about. As the figure uh, encounters a gate, it has to answer a question in order to pass through. When it passes through the gate, it scores points, and a certain number of points have to be scored to enable you to get out of that particular maze and on to another one. On we go, got 60 points. Which of these is a liquid? It would work quite well with pairs or small groups of children, um, better than individuals because they're able to discuss the answers and justify what they think. Or equally, I think you could use it for a whole class. What I particularly liked about the software was that it gives an immediate feedback to the pupils. OK, let's try that one. You're right. It tells them whether they're right or wrong in a way that isn't particularly threatening to them and enables them to press on fairly briskly to other questions. There's a danger that you can just use it as a kind of end of lesson filler for some pupils or even end of term use for others. Uh, so I think it could be value for money as long as the teacher's prepared to give it uh, a bit of work in order to make it relevant to what they're teaching. Roger, having seen the film, can I come back to you and ask you to clarify its use as an in, for an individual or for groups or for whole class? I mean, there we saw it very successfully used for a group of students. You can use it pretty much in that situation. Maybe not the whole class situation, but pretty much a mixture of groups or individuals. The thing to notice is that it does have an end of term feel about it. Right, yes, this notion of perhaps it's more fun, less learning. In times when schools are measured by their exam results, people will look to the computer to find something that helps push up those marks. And so this kind of software, which sits in the area of reinforcement, is, is the thing to be uh, looking at. 
I mean, I think as an interactive game, it seemed like the children in the video clip were enjoying just yes, taking part. So let's, kind of, let's not term, forget. So they were having a good time. <laughs> there are times that, you know, that teachers do need that as a resource to help revision. Um, as with any multiple choice, you've got to be careful regarding the feedback mechanisms. I'm not quite sure what you get when you get it wrong. Does it just say, sorry, try again? Or The, the help there is limited. You just don't open the door. But that's when the teacher's obviously got to do some sort of uh, intervention, whether it be asking the student to follow up on questions that they were unsure about or, you know, they've obviously got a role, even if their students are perhaps using it on their own. It did strike me, actually, that you could use it on an interactive whiteboard where a teacher could use the whole class interactively so that they could, you know, individual children could kind of come up. They could actually contribute to the answers and act as an assessment tool that might be an easier way rather than having children sitting in a little corner playing with it in a wet playtime. Um, I like the fact that the clip had um, the maze bit, but I was also um, pleased to see there's other things to it within this package. You know, even just looking down the box here, we've got a laser maze to do with light and reflection, uh, thinker, ma thinker magic, which is a match matching exercise of some sort. So there's more to it than just what we saw on the clip. Sort of a mixed response from our panellists there. But now let's move on to your second recommended resource. And that is Junior Simulation Insight from Logatron. Now, I'm not, I haven't quite got my head around this resource. Can you explain it to me? This is a simulation package. It's a kind of package which you will not really find anywhere else. It allows you to give a class uh, an opportunity to play with the variables involved in keeping your body temperature okay, looking after foxes and rabbits and see how they get on in the environment, looking at forces and more. So it gives you a chance to play around with the variables and the parameters that you wouldn't be able to do perhaps if you were conducting an, an experiment in real time, for example. It certainly does. At this level, you would probably use it as a simulation package, which is to see how it works, and then allude to the fact that things be, could be changed. OK, well, thanks for that explanation, Roger. Now let's go back to the London Metropolitan University IT Learning Exchange, where Ian Sillett shares his experience of this resource with us. Junior Simulation Insight is a programme from Logatron aimed at Key Stage 2 and also Key Stage 3. One way that this software might enhance teaching and learning is that it enables pupils to explore their own hypotheses, to try out, for example, in, in this example, um, how they can change the different factors influencing the growth of a seed, which is a, um, a common topic in science at Key Stage 2, and see the results of the choices they make on the growth that follows. We can see the effects on this seed over a period of time of adding water, or raising the ambient temperature, or introducing sunshine or cloud. But the fact that we're able to introduce these fairly abstract elements, if we were to look over here graphically, I think will enhance pupils' understanding. This one is a fam fairly familiar simulation where we're modeling the effect of a population of prey and predators in this case, foxes and rabbits. So as the population of rabbits gets eaten by the foxes, obviously the population of rabbits decreases. But as the population of foxes outnumbers the rabbits, so the foxes die off, and that enables the rabbits to come back again. We see that represented here as a kind of cartoon, and represented down here as a diagram. And that would enable us to then go on to talk in class about the pattern here the relationship between uh, the foxes and the rabbits there. It's a useful piece of software. It's not a piece of software that you can just pick out of the box and immediately get to use. It's one that takes some consideration and equally might provide uh, longer term rewards as a result. And although it's usable at the older end of Key Stage 2, it's equally and possibly more usable by Key Stage 3 teachers in their classrooms. Well, Roger, a key point that Ian picked up on there was the level 
at which this resource is directed. At key stage two, at the primary level, this perhaps then is very much a teacher resource that the teacher will use to enhance their teaching of concepts, say plant growth, for example. Absolutely, it has its best use in that situation. You, you use it as an add-on to the experiment that you're doing and you use it to understand what is going on inside that experiment and you can press buttons and make this go up and make this go down. Not for the fun of it, but for the business of understanding what's going on. So how important is it to introduce that type of concept at primary level? The business of building models or even unpicking existing models is, is not an everyday thing that we all grew up with. But this is something, in a way, you wish we were doing at the primary level. When you get further up the school, when you're dealing with maths and you're dealing with physics, then modelling is very natural. Well, let's open up to the panel here. I mean, Adrian, what did you think, this key point? Did you see this as a resource useful for primary science or not? I think you could use it for primary science in some ways. You're not going to get all teachers who are going to be given this and be told, right, you must teach this next week, it will help you children learn science but what it is is it's providing a, a, a modeling way for some teachers that will go hey actually that's really interesting and in that sense they'll be sparking off onto some of the children that they can pass on this sort of idea mm -hmm. some of the other simulation stuff that I've seen at primary is so simplified that you should either a be doing it for real or b you just think well that's not really taking them on any further with something with primary science you need to have hands-on as much as anything else. So we're talking about being able to model plant experiments, growth. I mean, it would be great beforehand if those experiments are practised. Absolutely. Do the practical first, for, but then... For real. As Adrian says, get the depth and the yes. science coming out much more because you can model it. Well, let's move things on now and, Roger, talk about your third resource, which is called Ask Oscar, and it's from company Cuddly and Soft. Tell me about this resource and why you chose it. It's a computer-based resource that encourages discussion around the topic of classification, where the computer asks you to think of an animal and then it attempts to guess the animal that you're thinking of by asking you some questions. What the computer is doing at that point is working its way through a tree of questions, depending on how you answer, whether you answer yes or whether you answer no. You'll start off with a question pop one question in there that helps to distinguish your group of things into two sets. You might say, does it fly, does it swim? Some way of sorting out that group of things. So you pick the topic, you put the kinds of material in there that you want, so it's quite a generic program right. and therefore could be very flexible. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But to summarise, we looked at three resources for primary science. The first was Science Mania from Topologica. Secondly, Junior Simulation Insight by Logatron. And thirdly, Ask Oscar by Cuddly and Soft. For more information on all of the resources that we discussed today, or to post your own comments about resources for primary science, you can go to our website, that's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want, you can email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So I'd like to thank our panel. Thank you, Roger, Adrian and Adrienne. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.